feel like augmented reality like, really needs AI art. Like, it, there's just no way that you can do augmented reality and, like, fill it up with meaningful information without AI art. So today what we're going to be looking at is a set of experiments. So we are going to be taking images from AR, projecting those into space, creating a really rough... 3D mesh of space and then we are going to be taking the image from that mesh sending it off to stable diffusion stable diffusifying it and then getting it back as another image and then adding that image on top of the mesh that we had before so so this was a bookshelf that I turned into like the French Revolution and it works really well like it got the edges of the counters really well and like it got the depth of the books like the all the books it turned into soldiers and then it turned the shelves into like different layers of some sort of like French building. I wanted to be upfront that I'm doing a lot of time jumps. So all of this does run, but it takes a little bit longer than I'm making it seem. Uh, so it takes about two minutes. It should take 10 seconds. It's mostly just me and my programming skills. And oh, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> This steampunk one is so cool. Like, I just, it's so cool how you can see it at a bunch of different distances. And it actually kind of shows how this could have a lot of utility because you can kind of see buildings in different styles. And so if you're doing some sort of like interior design, if you wanted to do a steampunk thing, uh, this is one way that you could look into doing it, which is really cool that it already has applications in my test demo run or like that there would be things that you could see being useful. Like if you wanted to do some decorating, that's how you could make it look more steampunk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> This window example definitely shows the limitations that you have with this methodology. So you can't really see behind things. And so that means that you end up with these really large artifacts if you try and look around things. So it's really only good for like parallax and if you're looking at it from a further distance away. Um, but it still is like, yeah, it's a good first step, I think. Even the images that don't work super well, they do a really good job of blending in. So like the summer and gothic one, both of these aren't great at actually creating creating what I was kind of hoping for, but they do a really good job of blending into the environment so that it kind of looks like that could be something that was actually there. They do change the color tone a bit so you can kind of notice the edges a little bit more. So because we're doing image cropping and resizing, the depth API ends up kind of losing some of its accuracy because it's also an image and so it also has to be resized, but it's at a different resolution. So there's kind of this extra level of issue that comes up. Uh, so this is just kind of highlighting how it how the depth API looks in our particular model. I think I made a few like small math mistakes so I think this can be improved just outright but yeah the reason why we don't have any landscape recordings is for a similar reason so the cropping and resizing ended up causing enough confusion that yeah it didn't work so well <laughs> The code for this project is pretty bad, but I feel like I want to share it anyways because that'll force me to make better code in the future, hopefully. <laughs> so the really bad part of this particular code, like the thing that I regret doing is uh, sending images as JSON. Not a good idea. Um, you probably knew that wasn't a good <laughs> idea. So JSON is a text format. This means it's about 10 times the size of other formats. It can take you about 10 times as long to open and close JSON messages too, which is probably the bigger problem. This is definitely one of my more ridiculous pipeline so basically what's happening is we are taking an image from the AR scene we're also capturing its depth information as well the image is being sent to a server a Django channel server which is a WebSocket server that's being redirected to an NVIDIA GPU on, a, on the another client side so the client is asking for data and then we're doing a transfer there it's getting processed then it's getting sent back and then it's getting reprojected into WebXR so we're basically using three different computers to do this uh yeah and <laughs> The reason why we're using three different computers is so that it's simpler to do future projects and then also because you can't actually really get WebXR and Stable Diffusion to be operating on a cell phone at the same time. I don't even, right, at, at the given time I haven't seen any projects using Stable Diffusion directly on a cell phone, although it should be possible, but... So I don't have the resources that I can just kind of make this available to everyone because of the kind of GPU involved. Uh, but if you want to try this yourself, there's a few different tutorials that you probably need to wrap your head around first. So um, to start off with, you'll need to know how to use camera access and the depth API in WebXR. So I have two kind of a little bit aged tutorials about that. Um, then you'll need to know how to do Django channels. So that's what I was using for WebSockets. Any type of WebSocket API should work. Node also has some really good stuff for that. Um, and then you'll need to do some web socket stuff on the stable diffusion side of things. So on the kind of wherever your GPU is located. Uh, and that's just kind of some simple scripting that you need to get your head around. And yeah, that's the third component. So, so that's all I have for today. Thanks and have a good day.